Hi, and welcome to the world's most influential writers. I'm Shirley R. Kleiner, and for the next few minutes, we are going to hear from a prominent historian, Dr. Holyfield. Dr. Holyfield is here to give us a bit of a glimpse into the life of Thomas Paine, the most influential writer of the Revolution. And yes, he's even more powerful than John Hancock with his liberty and death speech. Anyway, Dr. Holyfield will discuss Thomas Paine like she actually knew who he was, while providing a bit of a history lecture along the way. This way, we can weed out one more purely academic lecture out of the series and give you something a bit more narrative. Without further ado, I'm going to turn it over to Dr. Holyfield. Oh, Thomas, he was such a good friend. I was one of the few he had left when he left this life. I guess I understood him more than others. He was given a double dose of passion at birth, and everyone seemed to love that about him. Until, of course, he began to disagree with them. But that is a matter to be discussed later. For now, let me just start at the beginning. Thomas was born on January 29th in the year 1737 in the town of Thetford, England. His father was oh so proud of him and had grand dreams of what his future might hold. But alas, Thomas quickly became known as a failure. School wasn't for him as he flunked out at the age of 12. His father could think of nothing else to do with his son except to take him on as his own apprentice. Thomas tried to learn the trade, but failed yet again. He went through many jobs following this and seemed to be an unsuccessful commoner. In 1774, everything changed. Benjamin Franklin met Mr. Payne by happenstance and was able to successfully immigrate him to Philadelphia. When he arrived in Philadelphia, Mr. Payne began to pursue a career in journalism. He had the passion and the drive for it, and his rhetoric and style have been studied excessively in the present day. Being a journalist in 1774, he became very interested in the revolution. Thomas realized for the first time that ex exactly what exactly England was doing to the co their colonies. He began to write passionately about the revolution and became a traitor to the country of his birth. I always used to ask Thomas, later on in his life, if all of his passions were worth the great loss he had suffered. He always replied in the same way. He quoted a line he had written in one of his pamphlets. He said, I love the man that can smile in trouble, that can gather strength from distress and grow brave by reflection. Tis the business of little minds to shrink, that he whose heart is firm and whose conscience approves his conduct will pursue his principles unto death. And this is what exactly what Thomas did his entire life. Thomas is known most for his writing during the Revolutionary War. He was so passionate about the war that he became a soldier for a time, but he also failed at this. What he did, though, was more remarkable than fighting. He proved once and for all that the pen is mightier than the sword. One of his most influential works was The American Crisis. This pamphlet came at the perfect time. Our troops were destitute, cold, and being defeated. This pamphlet came right before George Washington and his valiant men crossed the icy Delaware River, causing the turning point of the American Revolution. Many have postulated that Thomas Paine's influential words were all of the encouragement that these troops needed to persevere. Paine wrote in a way that everyone could understand, from the aristocracy to the poorest of farmers. People understood what he was saying. His pamphlet, in proportion to population, was more popular and well-read than the Super Bowl is watched among modern-day Americans. Everyone knew what this man had said. Two of the most important points he made were about perseverance. The first was to the, the men and women who were tired of fighting and praying for peace to come. Thomas Paine, with his fiery style, responded by saying, No. He said, If there must be trouble, let it be in my day that my child may have peace. He was encouraging these people to think of future generations. He was calling them to rise up, to be strong, and to fight for the peace that generations would enjoy. Thomas was so passionate, and he cared so much, and he fought so hard. The second encouragement that my friend Thomas was able to give these troops is one of his most famous quotes. These are the times that try men's souls. The summer soldier and the sunshine patriot will, in this crisis, shrink from the service of their country. But he that stands by it now deserves the love and thanks of man and woman. Tyranny, like hell, is not easily conquered. Yet we have this consolation with us, that the harder the conflict, the more glorious the triumph. What we obtain too cheap, we esteem too lightly. It is dearness only that gives everything its value. Heaven knows how to put a proper price upon its goods. And it would be strange indeed if so celestial an article's freedom should not be highly rated. Thomas Paine was saying that freedom is important. Freedom is valuable. He was telling us that we have to fight for what matters, and if we got it too easily, we would surely give it away. And that is why future generations seem to not take American freedom so seriously. They've fought, they haven't fought for it like these troops had. And in regards to this quote, it came at the perfect time. 
It came at a time when the troops were deserting the Continental Army left and right. Thomas Paine encouraged them that it is one thing to stand for liberty when life is easy, when he was talking about sunshine, sunshine patriots and summer soldiers. When life is easy, it's easy to stand, it's easy to fight. But when trials come, when they are hungry, when they are poor, dressed in rags and away from their families, freezing cold and worrying constantly, is completely another matter to stand for what is right. The men that stand through the tribulation would be the men that would become victorious. Thomas wrote for the rest of his life. He was passionate about ending slavery, and he wrote a well-known pamphlet called Common Sense, which is also like the American Crisis and helping the American Revolution. He went on to leave America and to move back to England, where he was seen as a traitor. This accusation only intensified when he wrote The Rights of Man as a way of opposing the criticism of the French Revolution. He would have been arrested, but he fled to France and once again began to help a nation in their battle for freedom. He eventually angered the French as well, for he opposed the execution of their king, Louis the Sixteenth. He was imprisoned for two years, during which time he wrote The Age of Reason. This was his most radical work and caused his public appeal to decline even further. This was Paine's treatise on why he hated religion. Paine believed that religion was created by men as something that could enslave them. He believed that all religion was good for was controlling people. He didn't see the hope in it. He didn't see the hope at all. So he, when he wrote this pamphlet, he lost a lot of his audience. When he was in prison and about to be educated, James Monroe, who would become a future president, was then an ambassador to France. He ended up saving Thomas Paine from execution and having him released from prison. Later on, Thomas Jefferson invited Thomas to come return to America. When he returned, he found that because of his radical religious views and his writing of the Age of Reason, all of his contributions and writings that affected the American Revolution, all of his status, all of his fame were forgotten. He died alone at the age of 72 with no friends. Now, my friend Thomas was a good man. He may have angered many, but he was always true to himself. He fought for what he believed in, no matter the consequences. He was arguably one of the most influential writers of all time. His writings have encouraged people from all over the globe. He was a true journalist who didn't shy away from the, from the truth, even if it meant his imprisonment or death. He was always disagreed with. He was always criticized, but he never gave up. He was passionate. He would say what he believed. And America has so much to thank him for. For without the American crisis, we might have lost the war to England, and we might have never even existed. Without the American crisis being written, we have no idea what it would have happened in that war. And we have no idea if we would even be here today. Thomas Paine was a great man. And Thomas Paine was an influential writer. And even if his writings on religion completely disagree with what pop culture believes, he has one thing to his name. He was passionate and he was confident and he wrote to his convictions. And that is something that is sorely missing in the journalistic community today.